Hi, I'm Joanna Vicente, Executive Director and co-head of TIFF. Hi, everyone, and welcome to a special Q&A recording of The Father, Florian Zeller's gripping debut film adapted from his 2012 play. I'm happy to say this is one of the 50 official selection titles at the 45th Toronto International Film Festival and part of our special presentations. A big welcome to Florian Zeller and co-star Sir Anthony Hopkins and Olivia Coleman, who bring to life the story of a proud and beloved patriarch's tragic decline into dementia. I'd also like to congratulate Sir Anthony, who will be receiving the TIFF Tribute, Ceremon uh, Tribute Award okay. on September 15th. <laughs> this, <laughs> this year, our award ceremony will be televised on CTV in Canada at 8 p.m. EST and streamed on Variety's Facebook Live at 8.30 p.m. EST. Okay. While this year has been challenging for so many reasons, I'm so happy that we can be together virtually today and talk about the father. So let's jump in. I'll start with a question for Florian. So can you talk a, a little bit about the process and adapting uh, the screenplay from uh, from the play that you wrote? Yeah, so you're right. It's The Father was first a play and I wrote it something like eight years ago and it was on stage in Paris and then in many countries. And it was like a, a personal uh, story, but I felt thanks to the stage that it was also very universal as a story because I remember after every performance people were coming to us to tell their own story about uh, this issue. So I had the, the conviction that uh, uh, something was at stake to share emotions uh, with people. But I, I really didn't want to just to film a play. I wanted it to be very cinematic. So I worked with a uh, Anthony, uh, Crystal Hampton, sorry, uh, who wrote the script with me to make it uh, very cinematic. So we kept the, the narrative of the play, which was basically about uh, uh, playing with the audience, playing with the experience of uh, disorientation. But I wanted to, to, to make it even more cinematic. I thought it would be uh, interesting and exciting to play with the set. And, and and to 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 use the set as a character and to draw it and to think about how we can use it to 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 push the audience to to experience in a way a slice of dementia so as you can see the the, the main character is uh, his name is anthony uh, it means that when i wrote the script i i had anthony uh, the real one in mind and and uh, so uh, that's the reason why uh, his name is anthony so it was a, I remember when I wrote that, I spoke with my friends and my producers, and they were a bit laughing at me because, you know, I'm French, this is my first feature film, and I was aware that it's like um, not a dream, not easy to fulfill, but, you know, until someone comes and says it's not possible, it means that potentially it is possible. So I sent the script to Anthony through his agent, and one day I received a call, someone letting me know that Anthony wanted to to meet with me, so I took a plane with Christopher Hampton to to have breakfast with uh, Anthony in Los Angeles, and it was such a, a beautiful and joyful and intense moment. And it was the the way everything started for that film. Wow, amazing! Can you talk a little bit uh, since you mentioned Sir Anthony, how uh, Olivia got involved and how? Yeah, so I I come from theatre, so I knew uh, Olivia from stage because I've seen her on stage in London, and also I've knew, known her for many films and and, and Broadchurch as well, and I have always adore her. I'm sorry to say that in front of you, <laughs> Olivia, but I I think it's not possible not to love her when when as soon as soon as you meet her, and I knew that the film needed someone. Uh, you can feel empathy with immediately because it was not only about being in the main character's head, it was also uh, to feel empathy for this uh, dilemma uh, because I think everyone is concerned by it, you know, which is basically what do you do with the people you love when they are starting to suffer from uh, dementia. So I was so, I, I'm aware that I'm so lucky to have Olivia and Anthony in this story, such a an amazing thing for me. Oh, Thank you. Can you talk a little bit about just um, 
the process of editing a, a nonlinear film and, and also balancing the different kind of tones of the film. Sometimes it just feels a, like a very realistic family drama. And then at sometimes it's almost like a so psychological uh, horror thriller. So just wondering how you, you did it, such a beautiful job at balancing all those I, I want I wanted the film to be very realistic because I want you know when you see something on screen you you don't question it this is the reality and it was useful for me because then you have another situation it and that appears like a contradiction with what you have just seen and I wanted the audience to have to deal with that contradictions you know I wanted them I wanted the audience to be in an active position, not just to sit and to watch a story already told. I wanted them to be part of the narrative. You know, so we, at the beginning of the story, there is this apartment. No one is questioning what it is. This is Anthony's apartment. We recognize his space, his knickknacks, his furniture. There is no doubt about it. And suddenly there is that man pretending that this is his space and his, and, and to be uh, Anne's husband, whereas we just heard. Uh, heard Anne saying that she was about to leave uh, London to Paris because she just met a, a, a Frenchman. So it's like you have to to go into this maze in a way to deal with the contradictions. Uh, you do not understand exactly what is going on, but you are, and, and in a way, it was a way for me to to make the audience experiencing what the main character was going through, and 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 it's like a puzzle in a way. You can play with all the pieces. It will never work entirely, you know, as if a piece will always miss in a way, but it's done on purpose because the, the moment will come when you will not be able to understand everything or, and you will have to, in a way, to let it go or to understand it at an, another level, you know, let's say an emotional level. And again, this is the same thing that is happening to the character. You know, I think in the end of the story, even though the, the journey was complicated, sometimes chaotic, I think everyone can say what it was about, what it is about, where we are, what are the emotions, and what uh, what is the journey of Anthony. So uh, I'll ask now a question, Sir Anthony. So the, the film does such a, a great job of making the audience feel the fear and confusion of your character uh, struggling with dementia. So, and your character is also both charming, very charming, and also uh, menacing, but also lost and, and confused. So, how did you find the core of um, of this complex character? Well, I go back to the um, meeting with Florin, having read the script, the screenplay, I met Florin and uh, Christopher, and I was so knocked out by the script. And once in a while, you know, you get, you get a script that really grabs hold of you. And I was so passionate about doing it then to meet both Florin and um, Chris and Hampton. It was actually, I tell you, it was, <laughs> it was easy for me to play him. I think it was probably the most fun I've ever had on a film. I mean, I've been very lucky. The last five years, I've had some wonderful power working with Richard Hare and Ian McKellen and um, Emma Thompson, people like that. And then to work with Olivia, which is the best, you know. Um, I had such fun with it because I'm of that age. And I think, I don't want to get choked up, but I, I, I'm at the age where I feel that melancholy. I understand that. I can sort of feel it, you know. Those, but the, the 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 actual thing that really got me apart from everything else, the wonderful cast, Olivia and Florian, and the script, was the lighting in that little set in North London, wasn't it? Yeah. Those awful afternoons of heavy sunlight in a suburban street. You hear a car going by, or you hear children in the street. God Almighty, that hurts so much. And I think I'm at that age now. Not that I'm scared, you know, I've, I'm fit and strong today, but it was easy for me to play because my brain is that old. I've been around long enough to understand. I mean, I just jumped back on another one. I did Leah recently, and uh, just before um, the father, and 
that was an easy part for me to play at my age in the 80s. So the brain matures and one gathers wisdom. In fact, I know so little now and it was so easy to play and and follow, um, I don't know, I can't describe it. It was just easy. Getting up in the morning, going to the studio, this funny little building in Northwest London, where I grew up, <laughs> in the back of a warehouse, a small set. It was extraordinary. No acting required, you know? It yeah. was just get up, learn the lines, show up. There were, there, there were moments when I could, I, 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 had, <laughs> I had so many lines at one point, about a chicken, I remember. In this <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> and I couldn't, there were so many words, chicken, and I thought, I, I don't know what the hell, I didn't know what I'm talking, I thought I was really getting into dementia because <laughs> <laughs> I had to put a, a, a word there to remind me, and because I always love to learn the script, but you get to a point sometimes when it's sort of impossible to remember everything, and when you're working with such brilliant actors, um, it's a, uh, I don't know, it's easy. I, I don't play tennis, I'm not a sports person, but I guess it's like playing tennis when you're working with Olivia and um, working with Florin. It's like playing tennis. <laughs> it's really easy. It is easy. And um, my uh, the sadness was watching Olivia's performance, Olivia Cummins' performance, in her breakdowns because her frustration, the frustration, the heartbreak. Because it affects everyone. Me, the actor who's, or the guy who's dying of dementia, he's so out of it now, but there's the people around who really are splintered and broken up by it. And her frustration was heartbreaking. The hopelessness. How do you help someone like this? And of course, it can drive you crazy because you go crazy with the sufferer of dementia. Mm. And... Um, it, it was the best thing I've, it, I think it was the highlight of my life. It was the last, you know, I've had some pretty good ones the last few years. It was the real highlight. And, uh, For sure. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Oh, Anthony. Thank you, Anthony. Amazing. Oh. Well, med, it's true. <laughs> it's not just actor talk, it's true. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but but I, think, I think I'll just have this. I think when you're working with such brilliant people, um, you know, you get moments of intensity, uh, uh, but generally, the whole thing was the, the laugh. Yeah, you have to stand outside it. If you become so embroiled in the part, I don't think you can live like that. So, I don't know that as such, you know, but learn your line, go up and do it, and improvise within that. And it, it's it's a, it's a it's fun. It really is. It's a fun thing, yeah. If you know yourself, <laughs> I absolutely agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. Olivia, would you like to tell us like what attracted you to the project and also your experience? It seemed that it was a very intimate set, and we'd love to hear from you. But it is exactly as as Tony says. I completely agree. And watching Tony, you know, just feeling everything made it so easy. The script was so beautiful that it was so easy. Tony was so completely present that it didn't it was didn't feel like acting. It felt, you know, easy. He's exactly that his word is is absolutely right. And uh, it was an absolute dream. I, I I got to work every day. I got to sit next to Tony, um, <laughs> who. who does hilarious impressions and tells lots of stories and how and is just joyful to spend time with and heartbreaking to watch to watch him play that part it was just i absolutely loved it it was a dream i'd have done it for free but my agent says i'm not allowed to say it. <laughs> <laughs> um and florian i can't believe florian hadn't done a film before it was he was everyone was just completely oh florian knows what he's doing everyone felt so at ease that he was in charge of running this ship and it was a it was a, a compact and bijou and everyone, you know, trusted each other and it was a small group of people and it was just blissful. Florian, this is your first <laughs> film. Like, how does it feel to <laughs> just get this incredible to words you, from your actors? 
Yeah, to tell the truth, it, it was a joy, an intense joy from the very beginning. And it's true that it was because I made the decision to do it in a studio in order to be able to, to use the set in many ways. You know, sometimes, as you probably noticed in the film, small things are changing on set. I mean, the apartment is, has several metamorphoses during the, the, the film. So something, sometimes we played, we, we changed the proportions, the paintings, the furniture. So sometimes we, we were getting uh, dementia ourselves, as Tony <laughs> said, because we, we didn't recognize from one day to the other where we were. But everything has been done in a very small place. Uh, but this is the magic of cinema. When you are very close to a genius uh, like them, it, something is happening and it's called magic, you know. <laughs> Thank you so much. I can't believe 15 minutes went by and I would have loved to continue because this feels like magic <laughs> to, to talk to you. But if there's some last words that you would like to share, because I, I hate that we have to cut this short. Well, I, I just say that it's, I find it quite hard to believe that it was Florence's first directing job because he did it was so simple. He just, he floated through it. He just came in and said, okay, we do this, we do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, okay. And what was great is that, that the script is so tight and accurate <laughs> that I would ask permission to change a word. <laughs> I think there's one because it didn't quite scan in an English way. It was in the French. Yeah. You know, so you ask permission to do but it's when you have it, uh, you don't need to change it or rewrite or mess about or you know so many actors say I want to rewrite. No, that's rubbish. Yeah. You can't yeah. the actors say I want to rewrite. Do your job, and uh, <laughs> yeah. you know what? It, so it makes it so easy to work with a genius like any is a genius. I mean, you really thank. <laughs> but you know what? I remember Anthony. One day you came to me and you said, uh, "May I change one sentence, uh, one line in the script?" And I was. Which one? And you said, you know, in the script, it's written that the character is uh, drinking coffee, and I hate coffee. And is it possible <laughs> to, to say uh, I drink tea? And I was okay. Let's do this. <laughs> so it's it's such an honor to, to to work with people very respectful. Uh, can I say respectful in English? Yes, respectful yes, yeah. with the text. You know, because it's obvious that they are serving something else than themselves. You know, we are just telling a story. Uh, for the others and we are like a very few people together but uh, we are doing it for other people you know it's really about sharing things and yeah. i think this is what cinema is about it's about sharing emotions and making people feel part of something bigger than themselves <laughs> great thank you all so much thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you all. hope we see you all again soon Yes. yes, we did too. <laughs> it's keep hoping that this thing will go away. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so bye -bye. much. Bye bye.